Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. As you can see today, it is going to be a blessed and uh, I can say busy, but I'm just going to say blessed Sabbath. There's a lot going on today. Uh, we had the children's division come up and give the 13th Sabbath program. If you were blessed by that, can I hear you say amen? amen. Uh, we have a wonderful group of young people, of children here, and um, teachers, thank you so much for the way that you have led out in the, in the past uh, uh, two plus years of, of ministry. We're going to be, we will be going over the nominating committee report a little later on. But also, I, I want to just say that we have a, uh, a special group with us today, the Brown Brothers USA. They are with us today. Uh, they're an international group. They sing all over the United States, all over the world, and they will be uh, blessing us with special music today, and also, as you can see, we have our communion service, which will be happening as well. As I said, it is a blessed Sabbath, and I'm happy to be able to be here and to be able to celebrate it with you. Uh, just, a, just a note, just a couple of announcements, uh, the first of which is uh, there are blue cards in front of you. There should be some. If you have any uh, comments, if you want a connection with me, if there's anything you want to tell me but you weren't able to grab me on a Sabbath, put it on the card and I will get back to you. I promise I will uh, return your call. I will, uh, if you give me a, a number or an email, I will get back to you so that we can talk. Or if you just want to visit, uh, please put your name down and I'll be happy to visit with you. I, I look forward to those opportunities. I just want to mention our uh, flower arrangement today is uh, provided to us by Phyllis Lucas. Phyllis, there you are. Happy birthday for another uh, year of life. Another birthday has come. Happy birthday to you, Phyllis, and thank you for providing the beautiful flowers for our service today. I wanted to mention, too, that coming up tomorrow, Vacation Bible School will be starting tomorrow. And it will be uh, at 6 p.m., but there are some things that happened before. There are many volunteers that are joining us, just so you know, volunteers. Tonight, between um, uh, 7.30 and 8 o'clock, come at 7.30, we're going to be decorating and we're going to be transforming this church into uh, a stellar, universal type of uh, 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 environment so that the kids will be able to come and, um, and join us and and uh, have a blessed time from Sunday through Thursday. So if you have not registered and you would like to register, please see uh, Pastor Matthew on. He wasn't able to make it today. He's quite busy in the Hilltop group. Uh, but please see him. He is here today, and he would just like to connect with you so that we can get that registration taken care of. This time, I would, um, we're going to have fellowship lunch next week. Um, Wendy Gardner, Elder Wendy Gardner, she has an announcement she would just like to make concerning that. Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. And as all of you already know, next Sabbath is our potluck, the first Sabbath of the month. But there are rumors out that the Korean kitchen will not be open next Sabbath. So I need you to bring extra things, dust off your recipe box, get out your favorite recipe, get out your cookbooks, find something that you can bring and contribute to our fellowship luncheon because we love to have our guests come and feel welcome and provide them with a special lunch. So I'd appreciate any help that you can do by coming next Sabbath with food readily prepared to be served. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wendy, and we uh, always look forward to our potluck luncheons. At, um, I would also um, like to mention, before we go to our first reading for our um, nominating committee report, uh, you'll see in our, in our announcements, our, one of um, my predecessors, uh, Pastor Carlisle Skinner, um, he uh, passed away on Thursday, June 15. He went to his rest. Uh, the information is in your bulletin if you would like to attend the um, memorial uh, service, uh, the viewing, um, and the, uh, it's in your bulletin, so uh, please look at that if you knew Pastor Skinner and would like to uh, pay your respects at that particular event. Okay, at, at this time, um, I'd like to call up the secretary of the nominating committee and ask our uh, deacons who have the list of our nominating committee report to please start handing them out, and he's going to go through and and uh, 
talk about all of the nominees that we went through. I want to thank the nominating committee for all of the hard work that you went through. And as um, so I ask, come on up, and we're going to have you read the report. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Please bear with me as the list is long, and I want to try to go as quickly as possible, but definitely give the time, the appropriate time that's necessary to go through the entire list. First, wanted to start off by reading the, uh, those that were part of the nominating committee. Those members, uh, that committee consisted of Pastor Gressford Thomas, Sean McDermott, Wendy Gardner, Mindy Garcia, Christian Kurniawan, Eric Harqueen, Sanjay Sinclair, Kendra Manlove, Preston Hickey, and uh, myself. Elders. Uh, those that were nominated for elders, Sean McDermott as head elder, Chris Alvarado, Wendy Gardner, Laurent Jawina, Christian Kurniawan, Sanjay Sinclair, Fernando Navarro, Eric Harqueen, Joseph Rowe from the Korean Hilltop, uh, Suzanne Hong from the Korean Hilltop, Swing Ming Yoon from the Korean Hilltop, and Esther Garrity from the Korean Hilltop. Uh, clerk, Isaiah Guzman. Deacons, Cassandra Lopez as head deaconess, Doris Hernandez, Katrine Kurniawan, Mindy Garcia, Patricia Vicario, Lonnie Strauss, Lucy Jawena, Ruta Sirigar, Kevin Kaler, Stephen Lopez, Bob Kang, myself, Isaiah Guzman, Ulrich Jawena, Liam McDermott, Wilson Sinambella, Chris Chikurzian, TJ Galang, Eunice Kim from Korean Hilltop, Sean Kim, Kim from Korean Hilltop, and Enoch Yoon from Korean Hilltop. Junior Deacons, Aiden McDermott, Nathan Navarro, Connor Craig, Romina Ramos, Kira Alvarado, Roman Peranti, Jason Ramos, Chloe Alvarado, Nylena Powell, Kyliana Alvarado, Felice Strauss, Brian Augustine, Matthew Craig, Jessica Napitopulo, and Jonathan Navarro. Moving on to our adult Sabbath school superintendents, Laurent Jawina as head superintendent, Grace Jawina, Rebecca McDermott, Iona Nolan, and uh, myself, Isaiah Guzman. Adventurers, uh, we found the uh, uh, Karen Sinclair was nominated to lead the adventurers. The AV Audiovisual Committee, Eric Harqueen as uh, the head for that committee. Arlen Augustine, Chris Alvarado, Christian Kurniawan, Liam McDermott, Wilson Sinambella, and Carlos Reyes. Moving down to junior audiovisual team, we have Adrian Augustine, Brian Augustine, Kira Alvarado, Connor Craig, Aiden McDermott, Jonathan Navarro, Nathan Navarro, Romina Ramos, Jamis, Jason Ramos, Nylena Powell, and Matthew Craig. Children Ministries, uh, the head for that committee uh, was uh, nominated, uh, Mindy Garcia was nominated for that. Children's Sabbath School Superintendent, Letitia Craig and Sonia Ventura. Beginner Sabbath School, uh, referred to uh, Sabbath School Council. If you turn on to the back of the first page or the second page, that will, uh, we're gonna move on to the Junior Sabbath School. Wendy Gardner and Christian Kurniawan. Early Teen Sabbath School, Chris Alvarado will be the head, and Arlen Augustine who will be assisting him. Primary Sabbath School, Karen Sinclair and Letitia Craig. 
Kindergarten Sabbath School, Cherry Martin and Priscilla Morales. Cherry will be the head. Youth, Fernando Navarro and Elia Thomas assisting. Collegiate, Christiana Kim will be heading that committee and Sanjay Sinclair assisting. Children's story, uh, children's story coordinators, Chris Alvarado will be heading that committee uh, with the help and support of Sean McDermott, Sonia Ventura, and Pastor Gresford Thomas. Choristers, Arlen Augustine to be heading that, Karen Sinclair, Daisy Harqueen, and Wilson Sinambella to assist. Children Youth Choristers, Liam McDermott, Aiden McDermott, Jason Ramos, Jessica Napitupulu, Renee Vicario, Romina Ramos, Kira Alvarado, and Kyliana Alvarado. And Pastor, did you want to say something about the children youth courses? Because we didn't have that, and we had talked about identifying them. Do you want to say anything else? Okay, perfect. thanks. Safety Officer, Kevin Kaler. CIA, Cassandra Lopez. Karen Sinclair, Priscilla Morales, and Matthew Ahn. School Board, Sean McDermott, Lisa Kaler, and myself, Isaiah Guzman. Project Planning Committee, Carla Reese, Sean McDermott, Wendy Gardner, Sanjay Sinclair, Kevin Kaler, Preston Hickey, and Eric Harqueen. Fellowship Dinner, a team lead, well, the head will be Wendy Gardner, with the team leader, Phyllis Lucas, Lita Meave, Kriegler, Rebecca McDermott, and uh, part of that committee, Lucy Batuloka, Ruda Sirigar, Karen Sinclair, Damaris Raya, Priscilla Morales, Jennifer Augustine, Josie Aragon, Melinda Jacob, and Roxanne Valle. Treasurers, Sonia Ventura Head, and part of the Korean Hilltop, Maisun Ku, and Ivan Kim. Finance Committee, Sanjay Sinclair to be chair, Fernando Navarro, Sonia Ventura, Preston Hickey, Pastor Ahn, and Wendy Gardner. Decorating Floral Committee, Tasi Alvarado, head with uh, Priscilla Morales and Carla Reese assisting. Greeters, Isaiah Guzman, myself as the uh, coordinator with the uh, help of Stephen Lopez, Bob Kang, Doris Hernandez, Iona Nolan, Lisa Kaler, Carlos Reyes, Jeannie Guzman, Priscilla Morales, Phyllis Lucas, Lita Meev Kriegler, Roxanne Valle, Tasi Alvarado, Lupe Ionescu, Deborah Daly, Leslie Villanueva, Rosie Tua, Aaron Valle, Beatrice Guillen, and Kendra Manlove. Prayer Ministries, Priscilla Morales as a head, Sanjay Sinclair, Jeannie Guzman, Elia Thomas, and Daisy Harqueen. Kitchen Supplies, Head Wendy Garner and Phyllis Lucas assisting. Outreach Committee, Christiana Kim, Kim as head, Sean McDermott, Wendy Garner, Sanjay Sinclair, Fernando Navarro, Eric Harqueen, Gabby Navarro, Karen Sinclair, and Priscilla Morales. Pathfinders, Sean McDermott as director, Chris Alvarado, deputy director, Eric Harqueen, Mindy Garcia, Gabby Navarro, Nova Reyes, and Letitia Craig. Pianist, pianist uh, Laurent Joanna, Christiana Kim, Coquelin Lim, Deborah Tampubulon. Religious Liberties, Pastor Gresford Thomas. Sabbath School Secretaries, Patricia Vicario as head, Lupe Ionescu assisting, Grace Joanna, Jennifer Augustine, and Rita Napitipulo. Safety Officer, Kevin Kaler. I think I already, oh, we didn't do that one? Okay, Women's Ministries. Elia Thomas as head, Daisy Harqueen, Carla Reese, Lupe Ionescu, Wendy Gardner, 
Social Committee, Tasi Alvarado as head, Chris Alvarado, Wendy Gardner, Preston Hickey, Mindy Garcia, Priscilla Morales, Elia Thomas, Phyllis Lucas, and Carla Reese. Special music, Lucy Vatuloka and uh, Pastor Gresford Thomas. Vacation Bible School, Matthew Ahn, Webmaster, Eric Harqueen, Lisa Kaler, Jeannie Guzman, Tasi Alvarado. Wedding Coordinator, Tasi Alvarado. Youth Ministries Committee, Fernando Navarro as head, Sean McDermott, Eric Harqueen, Liam McDermott, Gabby, Gabby Navarro, and Daisy Harqueen. Community Services, Pastor Ahn to head. Community Services, Pastor Gresford Thomas to uh, head. Sean McDermott, Wendy Gardner, Eric Harqueen, Mindy Garcia, Priscilla Morales, Daisy Harqueen, Lita Meave, Kriegler, Nova Reyes, Joe Ramirez, Lolette Ramirez, and Lynn Van Mierlo. Communications, Pastor uh, Gresford Thomas to lead, Chris, Christian Kiernawan, Liam McDermott, Grace Joanna, Preston Hickey, and Tasi Alvarado. And the uh, church board will be consisting of uh, Pastor Gresford Thomas, uh, Chair uh, Peter On, Pastor Peter On. Turning on to the back page, uh, Pastor uh, Kim, Paul Kim, Isaiah Guzman, Clerk, Sonia Ventura, Sean McDermott, Chris Alvarado, Sanjay Sinclair, Wendy Gardner, Laurent Jawena, Fernando Navarro, Christian Kurniawan, Eric Harqueen, Cassandra Lopez, Christiana Kim, Karen Sinclair, Tasi Alvarado, Elia Thomas, Mindy Garcia, Priscilla Morales, and Preston Hickey. That's our first reading. Thank you, Isaiah, uh, for reading that long list. I'm just so you understand, this is a first reading. That means we have a week for you to review the list. You have the names of the members of the nominating committee. If there's anything on that list that is awry or, or, any, or perhaps you're saying, why wasn't I asked to do this? Please see a member of the nominating committee. We'd be happy to have you serve, your, uh, serve our church. And uh, next week, we will be voting on these names. So again, this is a first reading. This is just for your information. You have the list. Please look at, look through it. If you have any questions, please see myself or any other member of the nominating committee, and we'll be happy to go ahead and address any concerns that, um, that anyone may have. Okay, at this moment, we're going to go into our time of worship. I'm going to call our chorister, Noah McCall, to, to lead us. Let's stand for... to worship, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him. Let us pray, Father in heaven, we come before you, hearts full of gratitude, hearts full of praise, hearts full of rejoicing, because you are a God who is worthy to be praised. Lord, as we enter into this time of, of worship, of praise and thanksgiving, we pray that you would continue to guide us, to bless us, to empower us, Lord, to be your followers. May we, everything that is done in this uh, period of time, may it be for your glory, May we leave this place changed, rejuvenated, rejoicing because we have been in your presence and in the presence of others who love you and lift up your name. So, Lord, be with, be with us and, and bless us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let all the people of God say, amen. Remain standing for our opening hymn. 
I knew I'd get you on that one. It's time for our morning tithes and offerings. And today, if you look, our tithes and offerings is for the Pine Springs Ranch um, f fund. And it's a fund, that, a special fund that they have for low-income people, families that want to send their kids to summer camp. How many here have ever gone to summer camp? I see a few hands. I did once, and I really enjoyed it. My boys are going for the first time this year, so they're looking forward to that. And... But some parents can't afford to send their kids. And there are funds available to help those that can't. So if you are a family in that situation, whether you're here, whether you're looking online and you belong to this church or in this conference, you can contact probably the church or the conference and we could probably get you in the right direction to see if we can get you hooked up for that. But there's a conference-wide call for this fund today. So if you want to give to that, take out your tithe envelope. And if you look at the very second well, not the very bottom, in the largest section, it says, or the, it is the very bottom, Pine Springs Ranch. You can mark it there, and that's where those tithes, or those offerings will go. Your tithes, you can also mark on here. Loose offering, your tithes are not loose offering. Your tithes should be in the tithe envelope, and your loose offerings go to the local church budget for our local ministries here, like our VBS and everything else. So I'd like to invite the deacons to stand at this time. Please pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to return these tithes and these offerings. I want to ask that you will bless both, both the giver and the receiver and bless the funds and the ministries that are being supported by these monies, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning, happy Sabbath, church family. It is now time for the children's story. So if I can have the little ones, please collect the lamb's offering. For those who may be visiting for the first time, the offering will go to Offset Christian Education. Thank you. All right, um, let's have a happy Sabbath. Excellent. Um, so who here uh, gets visitors at their home often? Yeah, you do? You too, Jason? Yeah? Families or like uh, people who just show up at your house? Huh? All? All of the above? <laughs> okay, anyways, <clears throat> uh, my neighborhood is relatively pretty quiet. My house, we, we don't get too many visitors, right? except with uh, like family or friends coming over, right? So, but these recent two weeks, um, I've had, we've had quite a bit that came over to our house unexpectedly. So, um, it started two weeks ago. <clears throat> it was like at 8 a.m. Um, we suddenly get, um, <laughs> and this was after a very busy Sunday, uh, we get a knock on the door, right? Uh, doorbell and then a knock. And <laughs> I'm looking at that person now. Uh, uh, and I was like, ah, who's here at 8 a.m. in the morning, right? And, and then um, we have one of these cameras, right, that, you know, you can see who's knocking on your door. So I asked, I asked my wife, Catherine, who, who is that, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, looks like a salesman. Just ignore him. But this was a persistent salesman, right? And, uh, and then he knocked this way. I don't know if this is rude for me to do this here. Uh, he went like this. I was like, wow, I've never heard a salesman knock that way, right? Um, so, at any, way, at any case, uh, my wife was looking, continued to look at the camera, and he kind of stepped away from the front door. And then she decided to look at her phone, and it was a text from Miss Lita. And Miss Lita's like, Noah needs to pick up some stuff from your house. Oh, it's Mr. Noah. <laughs> so yes, it was Mr. Noah. He needed to pick up some stuff from our house. Um, so the, this past week has been pretty, pretty busy for me. And then we got another uh, unexpected visitor. This time, it was an actual salesperson. It was a saleswoman. Um, unfortunately, the, the curtain was partially open. And then the kids were being loud, so they knew that we were home. I was hoping, oh, come on, I'm so busy right now. Just, maybe if I just 
leave the door, just have her keep knocking, she'll go away. No, she didn't. So I opened the door, and she was trying to sell me solar panels. Okay. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, her explaining. I was like, okay, great, thank you. And then this past Thursday, I get another knock. And okay, I'll be honest. I was kind of like grumbling. I'm like, oh my gosh, who is it this time, right? And I wasn't like, I, don't, I probably didn't have the most friendly face on, right? And again, the curtain was open. The kids were being loud. And I was like, okay, if I, if I let her just stand there, maybe she'll, she'll go away. <laughs> She didn't, <laughs> and I opened the door, and I was like, yes, what is it? <laughs> and then it's a young lady, right? Um, she was probably, I don't know, 19, uh, 19, 20 years old, and then she was telling me, oh, um, I'm not selling books or anything like that, but I am trying to go to school in Oregon, and I'm wor- uh, I'm." passing these uh, literature around, and a donation would be wonderful, right? And I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, I was like, um, this is not subscription or anything like that, right? I was, you know, I was, again, I wasn't very friendly. <laughs> um, and, and I was like, in my haste, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to give her money and then be done with it, right? So I went back. I, was, I told her, okay, can you just wait here? Um, I I went back, grabbed some money, and I handed it to her. I noticed a few letters on her shirt. It said S-E-C-C. And I was like, no way. (laughs) So I asked her, what what school are you going to? Oh, it's an Adventist uh, school in Oregon. I was like, Adventist? I'm Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> so, and then, um, and what prompted me uh, to ask her also is the, the books that she was, like, handing out to me, Habits That Heal and, like, Healthy Eating. I was like, this is very, like, Seventh-day Adventist literature, right? <laughs> so, um, in any case, you know, at that time, I, I think God was trying to tell me something. Christian, you need to be nicer and kinder, Okay. <laughs> um, because you are going to encounter people, right? In your uh, look, I'm not telling you to open the door, okay? You need to let your parents do that, okay? Um, and be careful, stranger danger, okay? <laughs> but uh, God was really trying to tell me something. No matter how busy you are, how um, how you may be not feeling that great, you should always be kind to whoever it is you encounter. Okay, because you may you you don't know it may be a fellow Christian, a a fellow Seventh Day Adventist, just like I did. (laughs) So it was really an eye opener, and it was a blessing that I I was able to talk to her. And you know, I was, uh, I I, you know, I was praying for her to uh, be successful in her endeavor to go to school. Okay, so um, anyone here wants to have prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for such a wonderful life. Thank you for everything you have uh, provided for us. Thank you for our wonderful families. Thank you that you give us so many ways to praise you. Thank you for this church so that we can praise you. Thank you that you give us a mouth so we can say prayer. And please bless communion and the foot washing today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, kids. You can go back to your seats.
which it is now time for our prayers. We're not going to come to the fort, but we're not going to come forward, but just remain seated and let's bow our heads and pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come humbly to your presence, O oh Lord, to thank you once again of this wonderful opportunity for us to be living at this time. Because we know, Lord, that it is not us that we are alive, but it is because of Christ who has sustained us in the past and is presently sustaining us today and towards the future. So with this wonderful opportunity being given to us, Father, I humbly ask that may we use this time wisely because you have called each one of us out of the darkness into the marvelous light. And it is for a reason, O Lord, and that is through Christ in us to share the gospel to those around us that there is a God, a very personal God, who understands anyone, each one of us, like there's no one else in this world. So please, O oh Lord, as we make the decisions, O oh Lord, to serve you today, that may you please continue to send us your Holy Spirit, that may our hearts be encouraged, especially as we face the trials in this life. Because we know, O oh Lord, that it is through the trials, through the adversities, that our characters may be purified, so that may char- Christ's character will be ours. So please help us, O oh Lord, not to be dismayed, not to be disheartened, but to run towards you and you alone. And I humbly ask, O oh Lord, that with the special service today, with the foot washing, um, with the ordinance of humility, O oh Lord, that may you please um, help each one of us uh, to set aside any distractions in our heart, in our mind. So that, O oh Lord, that may we, as we approach to this ordinance, Father, may our hearts be humbled and to know that there is Christ who has died for each one of our sins when we cannot atone ourselves, but only Christ. So please, O oh Lord, be with the service today. Help us not only to partake on the service, but to grasp that true meaning, O oh Lord, of Christ's death on the cross. So it is not only for us to be saved, but may we be a light wherever we go for your sake, O oh Lord, so that more and more people will be one to the kingdom of heaven. Be with Pastor as going to present the message and also be with the remaining of the program and be with us for the remainder of the Sabbath. May we continue to strive to keep this day holy by having the close connection, close relationship, and close walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading is found in Matthew 26, 20 through 24. Matthew 26, 20 through 24. When the evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say one, to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would have been better for him if he had not been born.
Let's use this mic, okay. Right as we have uh, said today, it is a uh, blessed service, many things happening. The title of my message today, my, my sermonette today, as we want to get into the uh, communion service, is simply betrayal. Betrayal. As you saw from the scripture, we're looking at the man whose name... It was Judas Iscariot. When we think of the word betrayal, we know it could be a painful and devastating experience, an experience that could shatter our trust, break our hearts, leave us questioning the very foundation of relationships. Whether it's a friend who turns against us, a loved one who breaks our, our trust, or even our own actions that lead to self-betrayal, the wounds of betrayal can run deep. Now, unfortunately, we live in a world where sin and selfishness have, have become the norm. And this means we cannot escape the reality of betrayal. Betrayal has existed since the beginning of time. We only have to look to Genesis chapter 3 to find a story of, of Adam and Eve's betrayal of God's trust in the Garden of Eden. But another significant story in Scripture about this word betrayal is by one of Jesus' own disciples, Judas Iscariot. This, betray this betrayal was confirmed at the communion table, which is the perspective we're going to be looking at it from today. And it led to events that culminated in the death of Jesus. Today we're going to look at betrayal through the lens of Judas and see how Jesus made a final and passionate attempt to save Judas from betraying his master and betraying himself at the communion supper. Through the experience of Judas, what we will see is, is that Jesus is working in each one of our hearts to ensure that we don't fall into that same slow fade that leads to a spirit of betrayal. But before we go any further, please bow your heads with me. We're going to be looking at the Word of God, but I would like to pray first and ask God to guide us. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we are grateful for how you've led us thus far through this service. And Lord, I pray at this time that you would open my lips so my mouth may declare your glory. May everything that is done at this time be for your honor is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Judas, one of those words that have automatic recognition, whether you're a Christian or, or not, whether you have read the Bible or not, the idea of betrayal or, or sellout or traitor comes to mind when Judas is mentioned. You know, we have this portrait, this negative portrait of this apostle of Jesus. And, and, and can anyone think of a character in Scripture who presents us with, with more complexity and, and intrigue than that of Judas Iscariot? It's a very interesting uh, character to study. His name stirs the deepest of emotions. For example, how many of you know of a child named Judas? Judas. The McCall family have a lot of good Bible names in your family. Noah, Ezra, Silas, Jonah. Did you guys ever consider Judas? Just wondering. Okay, no, it didn't, didn't cross your mind. Just, just wondering. None of us have children named Judas. None of us would even think to name our child that. But oddly enough, this name Judas is a name that comes from the common derivative of the name Judah, which means praised. Raised. Maybe his, his mother was unable to bear children and, and had Judas and, and praised God and, and we will name him Judas. Yet when we think of this man, praise is the last word to come to mind when we think of Judas. 
But what's interesting about this pivotal disciple is, is that we don't have much information about him until the betrayal of Jesus. We see, we see uh, James, we see John, we, of course we see Peter, we see Philip, we see other disciples, but we don't see and hear much about Judas. And, and you know, it would seem that uh, the Bible being the narrative that it is, the awesome narrative story that it is, that, that you would have clues along the way in the, in the Gospels so that when Judas strikes, you could say, I knew it. I knew he was the guy. I knew he would betray Jesus. But starting along and reading, you don't have that. In fact, there's really no mention in terms of his actions or discussions other than John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, which is what we're going to be focusing on briefly today, that's where we see an interaction with uh, Jesus and Judas that that goes into the communion supper. Now, despite all of this, Judas is a a major player in the execution of Jesus, and, and few words and actions that we see in him can give us an insight into the meaning of communion, actually. And it can give us insight into our relationship with Jesus as his disciples today. And it can also give us insight into the importance of allowing him to lead every action and goal that we have as a church body. Let's explore what the Bible has to say. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Again, we're going to be briefly looking at that. As I was sitting and uh, seeing the time, I've um, edited my notes a little bit. We're going to be looking at John chapter 12. But before we get to John chapter 12, I just want to talk about John 11 just for a moment. Because John 11 goes into John 12. And what what happened in John 11 is very important as we consider John chapter 12. Now, in John chapter 12, we, we can think of, the great, we think of it as the greatest miracle that ever occurred. There, there are many miracles that Jesus performed, and, and perhaps we have our favorite miracle. Perhaps for some, it's, it's walking on water. For others, it's the raising of the 12-year-old girl. Perhaps some can relate to the woman with the issue of blood. But in John chapter 11, we see the raising of Lazarus from the dead. And the reason why this is the most impactful miracle that Jesus performed is because it had a great influence on the decision of the Jewish leaders on opposite ends of the religious spectrum. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they they couldn't see eye to eye on anything. But when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead and and they saw how the people were were going after him, they said, we need to do something. We need to come together. Imagine the forest left of the Democratic Party and the forest right of the Republican Party coming together and, and, and being united on something. That's what this is in John chapter 11. These two groups couldn't see eye to eye. But yet when it came to Jesus, and getting rid of him, that's where they agreed. In fact, in John 11, uh, verses 53 and 54, if you're, if you're there, here's what it says about them. It says, then from that day on, they plotted to put him to death. Therefore, Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went from there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim, and there remained with his disciples. This miracle and and the decision of the Jewish leaders to aggressively pursue Jesus uh, affected the way that he interacted with the Jewish people after that. He went to a place of solitude with his disciples. So what we need to understand is, is that from this verse, we can see that even though Jesus, he sought the solitude from the drama of being pursued, his disciples including Judas, were very much aware of every step and every plan that he made concerning his whereabouts. This brings us to John chapter 12. In John chapter 12, we're going to look at verses 1 to 7. That's where we're going to be focusing today. There are three accounts of this narrative in John 12, 1 to 7. One found in in Matthew 26, another in Mark 14, and, and this one in John chapter 12. 
However, this story, the story of the anointing of, of Jesus in Bethany, we see how Judas takes front and center within this narrative. I can imagine John writing this and the things he's saying and remembering and, and not thinking that Judas could have been the one and now as an older man writing this gospel saying, yeah, he was, he was plotting against Jesus the whole time. Let's read John chapter 12, verses 1 to 7. Please follow along with me. And then we're going to talk about that for, for a brief moment. It says, Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of the, his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would later betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial, for the poor you have with you always, but me you do not have always. Here we see the actions of this text. Judas is the primary objector of what is happening here. In this scene, we see that he is also called out as the future betrayer of Jesus. Now, what's interesting here is that before Judas went through the process of being the betrayer and betraying Jesus, we see him here betraying himself. He was clearly using the needs of the poor to satisfy his desire for his own needs. At this point, Judas had three years of experience of, of walking with Jesus, of even performing miracles and given the power to do things as he, as he went out, of talking with Jesus, having one-on-one -on -one conversations as being one of the 12 closest people in Jesus' life and seeing the way that people had come to worship Jesus. He saw everything. He experienced everything. He knew Jesus better than most. Most, almost anyone on the planet. He had evidence that this man was not just some ordinary itinerant rabbi just going around saying clever things. He knew that this man was the Messiah, that this man was special, that what he did and, and what he said was unlike what anyone had ever done in history. And now here we see Mary who also understood this as a friend of, of Jesus, spending a ridiculous amount of, of money. That, that amount of money is equivalent to a year's salary, spending it on Jesus and engaging in this humble act of worship. But it didn't phase Judas at all. It didn't phase him at all. The problem is Judas, with Judas is, is not what he knew. Because he, he, he knew so very much, he experienced so very much, but how he acted upon what he knew. How he allowed the presence of Jesus to affect him as a person. Being in the presence of Jesus all that time, he started to focus on what could happen as a result of him being a friend of Jesus, the cause of Jesus. Oh, Jesus is talking about the kingdom. Ah, maybe we can take over Israel. This, this man is unlike any other man. So Judas started to focus in on, on things not pertaining to his relationship with Jesus, but what could happen as a result of him being associated with Jesus. In this narrative, Judas expected Jesus to side with him on this issue. 
He expected him to, to, yes, you're right, the poor. We need to take care of the poor. He, He thought Jesus would certainly be about the cause of those less fortunate. But instead, he praised Mary's act of selfless worship. He praised Mary's desire to be with Jesus, to to spend, not just spend time with him, but to lift him up and and praise him for who he is and and what he had done for, for her brother, instead of just following the principles that Jesus had taught. In this simple act of, this simple interaction that we see here in John chapter 12, Judas showed that, that he had betrayed his relationship with Jesus for the cause that he had put in his mind that he wanted to do. Friends, if we're going to learn anything from this about Judas, and, and sometimes we, we look at the story and wonder what we can learn. This guy's a, a betrayer. This guy is, is, is no good. He's a, he's a cat. He's a traitor. He's all these different things. But one thing we can learn, first and foremost, is nothing, nothing should or can come between our relationship with Jesus. Nothing should come between us and Jesus. Not the church, not the cause of the church, not the cause of anything in the community. Everything must be centered on our relationship with him. Betrayal was imminent with Judas because he rejected that connection and became uh, obsessed with this this cause about Jesus. He became obsessed with his own pockets and, and filling them with the money that came in. Judas looked for the approval of Jesus in his thoughts about the money going to the poor. But Jesus redirected him. When he said, for the poor you have with you always, but me you do not always have, Jesus was saying, I, I, I know the poor are always there. We'll be able to take care of them. But at this moment, I want Mary's heart and I want your heart. I want you to be connected with me. We betray Jesus when we go about a life wanting him to bless our, our plans and things that we're doing instead of surrendering our plans to him. We betray ourselves, we betray Jesus when our understanding and interpretation of Scripture is knowledge-based and, and not relationship-based. We see so many things here within this short narrative. I want to go to Matthew 26. We're going, to, we're going to close by looking at Matthew 26 because something is there in Matthew chapter 26. And we, we see there in verse 20 through 24. Something is happening. Matthew 26, 20 to 24, it says, When evening had come, he sat down with the twelve. Now, as they were eating, he said, Surely I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and each of them began to say to him, Lord, is it I? And then we see, I want to skip to verse 24 and move quickly. It says, The Son of Man indeed goes just as is written, as it is written of him, but woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. We think of that as far as Judas' salvation, but, but what Jesus is talking about is the fact of, that what he represents, his, his heart and, and how he lived his life and what the disciples saw through him. You see, friends, what we need to understand is that Jesus was about building relationships. He was about building bonds with one another and with him. But Judas was about tearing those things down. That's what he represented. That's what betrayal was about. Friends, it happened at the communion table. At the communion table... It was a time when Jesus was connecting with his disciples in a way that he had never connected with them before. 
And here he was, Judas hearing all of these things, him washing Judas' feet and, and hearing all of these things that Jesus had said and giving him one last opportunity. He wanted to tell Judas, come to me, connect with me, have a relationship with me. Communion is a time to rebuild our relationship, but not only our relationship, because the opposite of betrayal is, is trust, to build our trust with Jesus. A time for us to, to show how much we love him and, and to illustrate to us by taking part of the emblems how much he loves us. It is a time to, to look back on, on what he did and to sit and to, and to contemplate and, 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 and to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you've done. But we see in Judas, instead of trusting in the relationship, he chose to trust in something else. Trust in himself. He betrayed himself. And when he realized that, that, that he had sinned, when he realized that he had sinned, the, the Bible tells us that he went to the high priest. He, what he should have done was gone to Jesus, but, but he had severed that relationship with him. So he went to the only other person that he thought could possibly forgive his sins, the high priest. And the high priest said, I want nothing to do with you. And Judas, out of hope, took his own life. Friends, Jesus is calling each and every one of us into a relationship with him that, that we can't even begin to comprehend. As we partake of the bread and the cup, it, it is an invitation to show all that you desire to have that relationship with him. I think of Peter. And perhaps you're thinking of Peter. What about Peter? Didn't he betray Jesus? The difference with Peter is, yes, Peter betrayed Jesus. But I'd like to say Peter denied Jesus. Because you see in the, in the account of Luke, when we see in Luke when, when Jesus was there and, and he was cursing and he was denying Jesus Christ, the Bible says that when that rooster crowed, that he made eye contact with Jesus. And then he knew what he had done. And he was sorry, he cried. Judas was there with Jesus, sitting next to him, sharing in that meal. And Jesus said to him, go do what you have to do. And, and, and instead of, of turning to him and saying, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know what I was thinking, he turned away from Jesus. He rejected him and went and did what he had to do. Friends, I don't know about you, but as I think of this word, betrayal, I don't think of it in terms of, of betraying Jesus per se, but I think of it in terms of us betraying ourselves. The communion table is a time for us to turn our trust, to turn our lives, and to turn our hearts towards Jesus Christ. And as we partake of it this time, I, I hope that our hearts and minds will be fixed on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. In the Adventist church, we have a, we practice what's called open communion, which means that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you want a relationship with him, if you desire to be one with him, united with him, we invite you to partake of the communion supper. Uh, before we do our communion supper, though, we do have the ordinance of humility, which is foot washing. And uh, we will be separating for that at this time. In the, um, they will all take place in the rooms outside uh, of the door here in the junior room. Uh, families with children can go. It's in your bulletin. In the kindergarten room uh, is for couples. For cradle roll, at the cradle roll beginner's room, the ladies can, co can come together. And then the primary room, the men can go ahead together and meet. We're going to take a few moments. We're going to separate for our communion, and we'll, I mean, for our foot washing, and they will come back and share in the supper. Let's have a word of prayer before we separate. Father in heaven, we are just so thankful. So thankful, Lord, that, that though 
many of us that, and many times have, have, have turned our, our hearts and our desires toward ourselves, that you are always calling us back, just as you were with, with Judas, just as you did with Peter. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would, you would send your spirit to enter us at this time as we partake of this communion supper. And may it be something, Lord, that unites us as a family and brings us closer to you. Oh, Lord Jesus, we ask in, in your name that you would guide and bless what's about to happen as we participate in the ordinance of humility. And we thank you so much for your sacrifice on Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let us separate for those of you who choose not to participate in the ordinance of humility. You may feel welcome to sit here uh, for a moment of silence. Um, we'll be back for communion in a few moments.
As we uh, partake of this supper, I would just like to read a short word of scripture. One of my favorite uh, scriptures about Jesus and, and who he is found in Colossians chapter 1. Uh, read starting with verse 9. I'm sorry, starting with verse 15. It says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. The Bible says in Matthew 26, 26, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. Um, all that are possible. Can you guys kneel with me for prayer? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time of reverent reflection on all that Christ has done for us on Calvary. And as we partake of this bread today, we remember your son's body that was broken for us, his body that was broken to pay the full price for all of our many sins. And we sit here today amazed by your love for us and all that you've done for us and the grace that you show for each one of us. And today it makes us want to recommit our lives, our hearts, our thoughts, and our everything to you. In Jesus' name, amen. this time, um, I think it'd be appropriate if there's um, anyone, like we do our last communion, who wants to share how God has intersected into your life. We can have someone from the AV team come and help out with a microphone to see if there's anyone that would like to uh, share a, a short testimony as we are passing out our, our emblems.
己。Jesus said, "This is my body. Take it, eat it. Remember what's broken for you." And I would ensure that it was broken time and time again, so that you could be with me for eternity. Let's partake of the emblem. Matthew 26, 27 and 28, it says, Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us kneel for a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for your son's blood that was poured out for us. He was willing to take that cup of suffering that we deserved take it upon himself, pour out his blood, and form this new covenant for the many, not just, not just a few, but for the entire world to pay for our sins. And today, as we prepare to drink this cup that you, that you have uh, symbolized by your death, and your shedding of blood on the cross, help us to remember how powerful that you love us, but you are willing to do anything to save us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus said this cup represents the blood that was spilled for all of the world. It's my hope and prayer that you will accept the sacrifice that I laid out on Calvary so that you could be with me through all eternity. Let's take part of the emblem. Bible tells us that after they finished the supper, they left with a hymn. And we are blessed today to have the Brown Brothers USA and close us out with a hymn, the Lord's Prayer. So I'm going to ask them to come up and to uh, close our time of communion in song.
Let us bow our heads for the benediction. Father in heaven, what a joy it has been to be in your house of worship, a house of praise. To experience all that we have today, Lord. It was a, it was a full Sabbath, it was a high Sabbath, Lord. And um, I pray that as we leave this place, we leave ready to, to tell about how we were filled with your spirit as we uh, bask in the presence of one another and in the presence of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Lord, we're so thankful for the sacrifice that he laid for us on Calvary. And Lord, as we uh, think about that sacrifice, may it always be on our hearts, Lord, to draw closer to you, to be in relationship with you, which is your deepest desire for us today. And now receive this benediction. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, to him be glory, be majesty, be dominion and power, both now and forever. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen.